All right, let's talk about something that's happening right now, and honestly, most people aren't even fully processing it yet, but they will. China has just made a move that could completely change the global technology hierarchy. SMIC, that's the Semiconductor Manufacturing International Corporation, just revealed a working 2 nanometer chip. And that's not just an impressive milestone. That's potentially disruptive in a very real, very geopolitical sense. And here's the crazy part. They did it while being sanctioned by the United States. They were cut off from the world's most advanced chip-making tools, and yet they still did it. They built a functioning prototype of one of the most advanced chips on the planet. No EUV, no access to ASML state-of-the-art lithography machines. It should have been impossible. But it wasn't. That's a seismic shift, and yet we're barely hearing a whisper about it in the mainstream conversation. It's like someone just rewired the global tech roadmap, and half the world hasn't even noticed yet. The big question right now is whether the U.S. has already lost the ability to stop China's rapid ascent. Because this isn't just a chip announcement. This is a signal. A massive one. And if you look closely, the implications are staggering. Let's start with what a 2 nanometer chip even means. Nanometers measure transistor size. The smaller the transistor, the more you can pack onto a chip. That means more performance, better efficiency, and a huge step forward in things like AI processing, data centers, edge computing, even space systems. We're talking about raw foundational technology here. For perspective, a strand of human hair is about 80,000 nanometers wide. We're building transistors that are 20 thousandths of a hair. That's not just microscopic, it's bordering on atomic scale. You're talking about packing the equivalent of a city's worth of functionality into something the size of your fingernail. Apple's current M3 chip is built on a 3 nanometer process. That's already incredibly powerful. It's why the latest iPhones and MacBooks feel so snappy and so efficient. And those chips are made by TSMC in Taiwan, which is still the most advanced chip maker in the world. Or was. Because here comes SMIC. Not just with a working prototype, but apparently with plans to begin mass production. If that happens, if they can scale this, it changes the game. Not just for China, but for the entire global tech economy. So how did they do it? Without EUV, which has been essential to creating anything below 5 nanometers? This is where it gets kind of genius. They probably used deep ultraviolet lithography, DUV, which is the older, less precise method. But here's the thing. If you use something called multi-patterning, you can achieve similar results. It's basically layering multiple exposures with extreme precision to etch smaller and smaller circuits. It's slower, it's more error-prune, but with enough engineering and optimization, it works. Imagine trying to carve a statue using a dull chisel. It takes longer, it requires more care, but if your technique is good enough, you still get the masterpiece. That's what SMIC may have done. They took a tool the world said was outdated and re-engineered it to hit an impossible target. And they didn't do it alone. Huawei is very likely involved behind the scenes. We know Huawei has been pushing hard on chip R&D. They've been throwing massive resources at the problem, hiring engineers, building facilities, working around the clock. The sanctions pushed them into a corner, and instead of breaking, they innovated. If SMIC and Huawei are collaborating, and I bet they are, that's a serious force multiplier. Huawei brings capital, talent, and design. SMIC brings scale and manufacturing know-how. And together, well, we're seeing the result. This also plays into a much bigger trend, China's drive for technological self-sufficiency. They've been methodically building domestic supply chains for everything. Silicon wafers, chemicals, tools, even replacement components for Western-made gear. It's like they saw the writing on the wall years ago and started building their own ecosystem, brick by brick. So now, they don't need to rely on imported tools as much. They're not at parity, but they're a lot closer than anyone expected. What's equally surprising, or maybe not, is Washington's response, or rather, the lack of one. There's been no official statement, no new restrictions, no big press conference, and honestly, that silence says more than any words could. 
It suggests they're caught off guard, still analyzing, still trying to figure out how China pulled this off despite all the blockades. It's like watching your opponent make a move on the chessboard that you didn't think was even legal, and suddenly you realize the whole game's changed. And you can bet this is going to trigger a response, probably more sanctions, probably more pressure on allies. But here's the thing, if the sanctions didn't stop SMIC, what makes us think more of the same will? Let's talk about the ripple effects. NVIDIA, currently the dominant force in AI chips, has built its empire on leading-edge manufacturing, mostly through TSMC. But if SMIC can start producing competitive chips domestically and at scale, China wouldn't need NVIDIA's silicon anymore, and maybe other countries wouldn't either. Intel's situation is even more precarious. They've been trying to catch up. But if SMIC is really on the cusp of 2M mass production, and Intel still wrestling with 7M yields, that gap might just become unbridgeable. And Qualcomm? They rely heavily on TSMC too. But if SMIC can make chips faster and cheaper, and without the political baggage of US export rules, they could carve out a major slice of the global mobile market. And let's not forget TSMC itself, Taiwan's crown jewel, still the most advanced foundry in the world. But this news has to be making some people very nervous. Because if SMIC can scale 2mm chips, that erodes TSMC's edge fast. Taiwan's economy is tightly bound to TSMC's success. So this isn't just about business, it's about national stability. And the geopolitics? They just got a lot more complicated. The US relies on TSMC for cutting-edge chips. And if TSMC starts feeling pressure from both Washington and Beijing, that puts them in an incredibly difficult position. Especially when the tech in question underpins everything from iPhones to missile defense systems. Chips are no longer just about performance. They're about power, influence, who sets the rules. And if China becomes truly self-sufficient in semiconductor manufacturing, the West loses one of its last great levers. Countries that once had to depend on U.S. or allied chip supply could soon be looking at Chinese alternatives, cheaper, unrestricted, and politically aligned. Of course, SMIC still has to prove it can scale. Making one working chip is hard. Making millions at consistent quality under real-world manufacturing constraints? That's a whole different challenge. And there are already reports of yield issues, chips not coming out perfectly every time. That's expected when you're pushing beyond what your tools were designed for. But China has the money, the engineers, the political will, and maybe most importantly, the time. With full state backing, this isn't a startup sprinting for runway. It's a national effort, a moonshot with no ceiling. If SMIC nails this, the world changes. And fast. So, yeah, this isn't just a chip story. This is a story about who gets to define the future. And right now, China's not just catching up, they might actually be pulling ahead.